Welcome to Concept 4 Notes. We are going to talk about work and power. So I first mentioned the term work back in the Concept 1 Nature of Energy Notes. When we defined energy, we defined it as the ability to cause change, and it's measured in joules. But we also said an alternative definition could be the capacity to do work or produce heat. And we now know from Concept 3, thermal energy, that heat is the transfer of thermal energy from one object to another due to a temperature difference between those objects. So energy is the capacity to produce that, to make that happen. It's also the capacity to do work, which we're going to define in a second. But before we do that, I want to tell you what thermodynamics is. Thermodynamics is the study of relationships between energy, heat, and work. So these all go together. And we first heard that term thermodynamics back in concept two. We learned the first law of thermodynamics, which is the law of conservation of energy, which says that energy can never be created or destroyed. It only changes forms. And in my class, we're not going to go into any more of the thermodynamics, but in other classes, you might go into it a little bit deeper, but that's kind of what's tying all these things together. So let's talk about work because if energy is the capacity to do work, when do you know what that is? And I think a fun question to consider is, have you done any work today? You might think you have, you may not actually have. So let's see. Work, which is abbreviated as a capital W, is the transfer of energy. So just like heat is the transfer of energy, so is work, that occurs when a force makes an object move. So if a force makes an object move, work has been done. It's measured in joules since it's an energy transfer. And in order for work to happen, two conditions must be met. And it's in the definition, okay? The object must move and a force must be applied in the direction of the movement. So consider this picture. If someone was to stand there just holding three textbooks, not moving, we would technically say that work is not being done, even though your arms might feel otherwise holding those books. But once you start moving and those books are moving, let's say you start doing, you know, bicep curls of the books, work is being done, energy is being transferred as a force is being applied to make those objects move, okay? We can summarize it as an equation, and the equation is going to make so much sense based on the definition. Work is equal to force times distance, F times D. So work is measured in joules, force is measured in newtons, as we know from our motion and force unit, and then distance will be measured in meters, Let's do an example. You move a 75 kilogram refrigerator 35 meters. This requires a force of 90 newtons. How much work was done while moving the refrigerator? So what do we know? We know the mass is 75.0 kilograms. We know the distance is 35.0 meters and that the force is 90.0 newtons. We're looking for work. Okay, we know that work equals force times distance because that's something we uh, just talked about. Okay, so we're going to draw a line. So all we need is that force and distance. This mass, it's, it's something we don't need to solve this problem. Okay, just put in there to throw you off and make you think. So work equals force times distance. That's 90.0 times 35.0 and you get 3,150 joules as your answer. Okay, we're going to do some practice together, finding work, rearranging for distance, and then a slight curveball here um, with the term weight. I'm not going to show you the answers because we're going to do this in class, but I want you to try those. And for the sake of the video, now we're going to talk about power because this is the work and power concept. So power is the amount of work done in a certain time. Another way of saying it is it's the rate at which work is done or um, others define it as the rate at which energy is converted. Um, you know, that's another way to think about it. And it's, it's a rate. So it's just like, just like speed is a rate. It's calculated as a uh, work over time. So power equals work over time where power is measured in joules per second or watts, which gets a little tricky because watts is a, a capital W just like work. So you can put joules per second or watts for power. Uh, work is measured in joules and uh, time is measured in seconds. And you've probably seen watts before as a unit of measurement on like a light bulb. Is it a 60 watt light bulb? Is it a 90 watt light bulb? That kind of thing. All right, let's do an example of an equation. 
It took 150 seconds to move a refrigerator. You did 3,150 joules of work in the process. How much power was required to move the refrigerator? So we know that the time is 150 seconds. And we know that the work is 3,150 joules. We want to know the power. The equation is power equals work over time. So that's all my background work. Draw a line. Now we plug it in. P equals work, which is 3,150, divided by time, which was 150. When you plug that into your calculator, you get power equals 21 joules per second, or you could say 21 watts would be totally fine. And we're good on sig figs and all of that. Okay, in class, we're going to do some um, work calculations. But I have a, one more thing I want to introduce you to before I um, let you go in this video. And that's what machines are. This is something you have probably heard in previous science classes. I'm going to briefly introduce you to here. And then we're going to do an activity where you'll, where you'll dive into this a lot deeper. But a simple machine in particular is a basic mechanical device that changes the direction or the amount of force needed to do work. So it simply makes work easier. Okay, there we typically will categorize them as six different simple machines. You have pulleys, levers, wheels and axles, wedges, inclined planes, and then also screws. And then a compound machine is what we just think of as just a machine. It's just a combination of two or more simple machines. So when we start putting these things together into more complex arrangements, it's a compound machine. Now, two last terms I wanna introduce you to. Because machines are useful because they make work easier. They, and they do that by changing the way work is done. And in, so they can increase speed or they can change direction of a force or they can increase the force that we're able to output. And so ways that we can understand how effective machines are, are by looking at how efficient they are and how effective they are or their mechanical advantage. So first, efficiency. This is the ratio of the output work to the input work and it's represented as a percent. So you're always gonna put more work in the machine than you get out of it. But the percent efficiency is the output over the input times 100. So if a, a machine is 90% efficient, it's pretty efficient. If it's, um, you know, 20% efficient, it's not super efficient. Um, other ways to explain this would be like, if you put 80 joules of work in, and then the machine puts out 60 joules of work, it was 75% efficient, okay? All right, now let's talk about mechanical advantage. Uh, mechanical advantage is the ratio of output force to input force. So the input force is how much force a person or device is applying to the machine, and then the output is how much the machine then is going to apply to another object. And so we calculate this as output divided by input. So for example, if you put in 200 newtons of force, and the machine then can put out thousand newtons of force, then the mechanical advantage, the effectiveness of the machine, it's five times more effective than what you could do without the machine. To me, this is the most interesting and helpful number to look at when we're looking at a machine. I'm not going to have you ever calculate these. I just want to show it to you so you can understand machines better because now you're going to be sent off to do a little research and reporting about these simple machines in everyday life um, and learn a bit, little bit more about work and power applied to the things all around you. And that is our concept four notes.